Welcome to this week's vlog. We have a little bit of a cruise and we start off at, um, at Stow Hill near Weedon and um, finish off, I don't know where, where do we finish off. Anyway, we've, we've met a lovely couple along the way. I think um, great, great couple, spent quite a bit of time uh, with them, uh, particularly Colin. Uh, Colin and Elaine, they live on a boat. And they helped us through some locks and um, I discuss a small boat because it's small. I mean, I talk in the video about life in a small home. I don't class this as a small home, but this boat is. Anyway, run the VT. On the moon, and uh, well, we're going to Braunston, centre of gravity for the narrow boat world. I don't know why, really. I suppose it's the centre. Anyway, um, Braunston. I've noticed that there's some markers along the line, and I was travelling from Nottingham to to London. And then it was like, uh, you're 60 miles from Braunston and you're 30 miles to Braunston and all that sort of stuff. And then you, when you're going away from Braunston, it's as if the signs are saying to you, you're going away, you're leaving. You're eight miles from Braunston, you're 10 miles from Braunston and all that sort of stuff. So I'm heading towards Braunston, I think, I don't know how many miles it is, eight, nine, something like that, don't know. Anyway, not too far away. I've uh, met a guy called Jay once I've been here. He's uh, he's a fellow on this wide beam thing here. And uh, nice fella. He likes crown green bowling. Lloyd's up in front. Tonight, I can tell that you don't care. drying out I mean that was proper minging earlier in the week as the uh, the canal was defrosting thawing and the dampness got into the ground it was oh I'm glad I had my welly boots let's put it that way anyway that fella that's passed was turning clearly turned here so I th I think he caught Lloyd off guard and I was a bit close to Lloyd, to be fair. But I didn't expect him anyway. Yeah. Nothing, nothing went wrong. Drama's averted. And now, hopefully, we've got a plane sailing trip to Wilton Marina. Here's some ducks here, look. Having a proper good swim. I didn't know they went completely underwater and, and all that sort of stuff. But clearly they do. They push a cat on the uh, on the chair. Ooh yeah, la chat. La chat is sur la chair. That's about the best of my French I can muster up. Je m'appelle Christophe in my French accent. Oui. Here's a small boat. Now, I come to do my, um, drop my rubbish off yesterday or the day before, I don't really know because boaty time blurs into one day and the next, to be honest. Now this boat is seven paces long. 
seven marching paces. A marching pace is 30 inches, unless you're stepping short, and it's seven marching paces long. That's not a big boat, by the way. And that's end to end, don't forget. So um, the, the actual cabin space is probably five. Now, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, there's a bed, that's, that's six foot, isn't it? Toilets in there somehow. And something to cook on. And you know when people say, oh, I'm living in my tiny home, and they've got a big narrow boat. Well, I never say I'm living in a tiny home, because I don't think this is necessarily tiny. in front of me at Bugbrook. Went out for a bit of a Christmas cruise. Didn't go very far though. Got there in a day I suspect. Maybe got water along the way. Don't know. Don't know. I mean, clearly, clearly it lifts boats. Unusual style of boat, I have to say. Very nice, though. And here's A and N Buckle, who fix canopies and things. I met them at, um, where did I meet them? Fenny Stratford, when there's a little bit of a marketplace there. Fenny Stratford Market. Fixing canopies. Two nice boats, actually. So shout out to Star Crafts. Crouching canopies, repairs undertaken, boat safety scheme examiner. What else does he do? However, nice space. up here overnight um, because it's just short of Wilton Marina because you've got a train track over there you have boaty stuff here look and you've got the M1 motorway just through there and a little bit further up all three converge into quite a close tight space I'm trying to get some light there we go into a a close tight space so this is the quietest part before we we get to locks about five locks we've got to do and then we get to Napton Junction and we turn left to go to Braunston and go through that tunnel with a big I think it's got a big kink in it anyway um, so all three modes of transport converge into one small little area so you've got choo-choos boaty wheels and it's a cold brisk morning a dry wind but a cold wind and got some locks to do so it's going to warm me up looking forward to it 
and Lloyd's been up there. He's had his, I don't know, washing out on the clothes horse. Here we go, though. to measure the speed of the boat quite well. I mean, those two ducks were in front of the boat, I thought, oh, no, no. Um, but they seemed to be nonchalantly swimming by. I'm not sure how much room there was between the front of the boat and the ducks swimming past, but they seemed to be nonplussed. And here's the, uh, the M1 encroaching into the battle space of the canal. Battle space stroke noise space. Virgin, and then the choo choos coming this way as well. Oh, chilly, chilly, and I wish I had my gloves on. Admin, admin. Don't know. Hieroglyphics. Maybe he's Egyptian. Come down from the understand ancestry of um, I don't know. How are you? Very good. Probably the Fiji Arsenal fan. Hey. hey. <laughs> good man. Thanks very much. I've just put your boat on on the tube. I thought that was hieroglyphics at the front. Oh, absolutely. Take care. That was very nice. That was Ian. <laughs> Isn't that good? locks I've had to do in fact to be honest all I've had to do for these locks is try and get some sun there we go all I've had to do for the locks is open the paddles and that's it because Colin and Eileen we met them in a pub yesterday whilst they were having Sunday dinner and I have to say it, it looked amazing Sunday dinner and Colin was just saying oh it looks lovely it tastes lovely thick bits of beef yeah nice one cold cheers I just had a liquid pint and um, it was bought by uh, by Lloyd as it happens because I didn't make wallet and all those people that know me well go no that old chestnut Chris yeah nice one and I literally I wasn't planning to go to the pub met them yesterday at the pub and I said oh, we're coming up to top lock today or tomorrow and they said oh what time I said we'll be at the first bottom lock for nine o'clock we were there for nine they were here for nine and they were helping us through the five locks we've got to do. Isn't that kind? I just think things like that are amazing and it makes my life, our lives, everybody's lives so much ple more pleasant. Um, so I'm allowing Lloyd to faff around and then I'll, eat, uh, I'll mop up. Which side, of the, which side of the locks are you going in? Don't know. I don't know. Collins 
shady character. He's got his um, hoodie up and he just looks a bit sinister. <laughs> Look at him. Do you remember that old fella, that, that um, guy from Star Wars? It, uh, the one higher up than Darth Vader. He had the Emperor. Dun, 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 all that. That's him. <laughs> Look at him. He, anyway, he says, I, I can't remember. Comment below on what was that character? Anyway, Colin. I can smell something nice and habanito or whatever you call that. Oh, it's like bacon and sausage sandwiches, probably an early morning breakfast and... Ooh, it smells lovely. It does, absolutely. Hub, hub, hubbin, hubbinita, hubbinetta, hub, hubby thing. Yeah. I tried some spam out. Spam. I haven't got the tin. It used to be cheap meat, but um, it's not necessarily cheap in, in a tin anymore. Now, back in the school days, we had spam fritters. I hated spam fritters, and it wasn't necessarily the meat, or maybe it was the meat, but it was the fritter bit. And I don't necessarily like fish and chips. I like fish, I like chips, but I don't like fish in batter. And I think that's uh, down to school days. I mean, I can eat it. I, I, I um, forever and a day, turned my nose up at spam. And then when I joined up in, in the early 80s um, for, for rations when you're in the field or when you're training for war and all that sort of stuff, and there were small tins, you know, 24-hour you know, compo rations, composition rations, uh, small tins and one of them was baking grill and I said to someone what was, what was baking grill he said it's like spam well, I don't like spam well that's what you got and um, and basically you kind of eat it cold or you put it in in your mess tin and then boil it up and then eat it warm and actually it wasn't too bad and then when I moved across to Germany Someone cut it up and then put it in a frying pan and cooked it and put it between two bits of bread. Tasty. So here we have the remains of um, today's spam. Oh, my f fingers are minging, minging. I don't know what I've been doing today. Cut it up. One dirty pan, but it's only had spam in it. Um, that's it, just putting them up. But I need to open the window, and I'll tell you the reason why. Did I stink the boat out? If you've got one of those extractor type fans, great idea. I haven't. Um, it stinks the boat out. One of the principal reasons for me having spam and cheese wraps. It's because I need to use the wraps up and I don't want to waste food. Day 22nd, there we go, 22nd of Jan. We're now on the 31st of Jan. It's okay. No, um, no mouldy bits. And the cows are nearly ready, look. My new mug. Dinner tight. Actually not too bad. Nice with the cheese actually. That makes a difference. Don't necessarily think it's healthy. I use the yuppie type of food. It's not really a meal, it's just a snack. It's reasonably tasty. On my way up here, I saw a boat which I said was very small. It was seven marching paces long. 
that was end to end and it was five marching paces usable space in the cabin that got me thinking five paces is that post quick march five paces so let's put that boat into perspective okay interior on my boat is well it's 50 odd foot it's 66 take off it's 51 foot five paces interior of the boat now we're starting from from this point here which is the uh which is the start of the um, dinette here we go uh which leads me to the front edge of of the stove in that space the person who owns that boat has got to squeeze in let's discuss i mean that boat i don't know how he survives and, and the, there's a reason for that is i would imagine and i'm only imagining the bed also doubles up as a sofa somewhere in there he's got to have a toilet so a composting toilet perhaps um you know a cassette style toilet somewhere in there they've got to cook so what type of cooking facility have they got is it just a dual burner is it a single burner and in there they need a sink and i understand that van life all of that is in pretty much the same amount of space so all of this can be done but a boat is different to van life and the setup is different crockery um pots pans all that sort of stuff they might just have a frying pan and a small pan do they have a a cool box or do they just not bother not an awful lot of space and when you've put like a sofa in there which acts as a sofa and a bed well that's six foot how many paces is that wait out that's two paces of your five paces that's just the bed one pace for the toilet another two that's 60 inches the distance i am from the lens of kitchen space i don't know for um entertainment is book reading it's what we used to do back in the day and these up-to-date um tablets are very good at producing entertainment well you can watch this for starters it just made me consider stuff i mean you can't have a shower really um because that would encroach on how much water you've got and and how big your water tank is and the boat's not really big enough to have a huge water tank maybe they've just got water containers that they fill up and then use the water container to do cooking and, and washing and washing up and, and for showers well maybe they do like amanda does and that's go to the swimming pool or shower at work or i just think that style of living in a boat that that small hat off i just think that it's incredible that some people live in such small spaces but i did note it had a um it had a solar panel on the top it had a bike and um clearly there's some tech in there and you'll notice the first porthole window from the stern is well is a porthole because people generally when they have big bus you know big big windows and they have portholes portholes is where the toilet and, and the bedroom is but i think the porthole on that boat is is where the toilet and and possibly shower and uh, also they have um a multi-fuel stove so they've got to have coal and all that sort of stuff that goes along with it and how much they keep on the boat as opposed to to where do they get it from i think logistically that's quite a challenging lifestyle on that particularly small boat but clearly there's people that manage and i take you know as i said i take my heart off to you those of you that got this far thanks for watching thanks for liking thanks for subscribing if you haven't subscribed give it a go because i talk about all sorts of stuff um narrow boaty and otherwise at times and i visit all sorts of places and um if you like this style then consider subscribing and if not well next week well next week what do i do well i go to bronson 
is not what it appears. Spoiler alert, no I'm not going to. Until next time, ciao Potter.